Webinar AI was a great software and such a time saver for many people with features like sky replacement, portrait bokeh, retouching, and more. And with the introduction of their new software, Luminar Neo, they introduced many new improvements as well as new features. Today, we're going to be looking at six features in Luminar Neo that will make your photo editing workflow so much easier. So whether you are an existing user of Luminar AI or completely new to Skylum software, this video will give you a better look at Luminar Neo and help you decide if it is for you. So starting with the first feature in Luminar Neo, which is Portrait Bokeh. Portrait Bokeh is a feature that's been in Luminar AI for quite some time and it's also available in Luminar Neo. You can find it under the portrait section, click on it to expand it and then all you have to do is to increase the amount to blur the background. As you can see, the subject was automatically masked out and the background is blurred. We can also do some changes to the background by expanding the background section. And from here, we can control the depth of the blur by decreasing the slider. And as you can see, the blur depth is now much closer to the foreground. You also have the edge correction slider, which will help you fix the edges of things like hair. So this is before and after. And by the way, you can toggle the before and after preview using the backslash key on your keyboard. And you can also control the visibility of the individual effect by clicking on this eye icon. In Luminar Neo, they introduced the layers feature. So if I close the tab of Portrait Bokeh, and then I'm going to click on it again, as you can see, all the settings are now reset. That's because it's now moved under the edit section. And now we can make changes to the effects we added in this tab and we can also stack them on top of each other. So now you have the ability to stack multiple layers of the same effect. If you hover over the canvas, you will see a preview of the mask that Luminar created and you can use the brush tool to paint on top of this mask. In this example, if I increase the amount of bokeh, you will see that Luminar have missed some areas. We can try to fix that using the edge correction slider. That will help the image a little bit, but what we can do now is to use the brush tool to fix the missing areas. We can switch to the defocus mode, then using the bracket keys to control the brush size, we can paint on top of these areas to exclude them from the mask. You can also use the shift and bracket keys to control the softness of the brush. Now if you want to restore this part of the hair, we can switch back to focus and then we can simply paint on top of it to fix it. So this next feature is going to be very useful for you if you are one of those people that gets overwhelmed with the amount of controls and sliders in a software like Photoshop and have no idea where to start to edit an image or if you want to simply save a lot of time. So this feature is called Enhance AI and you can use it to enhance the image using the accent slider. As you can see, it will restore those details in the image and it also adds some contrast. There's also a sky enhancer slider, which will really bring back those details in the sky. What we can also do is go to the landscape tab and then enhance that golden hour effect using the golden hour slider. So as you can see, just with moving a few sliders, we took the image from this to this in a short amount of time. You can also go even further and apply another layer of Enhance AI to the image if you want to. So this is a very useful feature, especially if you are a beginner and want to edit some images fast. Another great feature that was introduced with Luminar Neo is AI Mask. You can find the AI Mask options under the Masking tab, then you need to click on AI Mask. This feature is available on most of these tabs. And once you click on it, you'll see an animation that indicates that Luminar is using AI to scan the image and it's going to output multiple masks of what thinks it's inside the image. So as you can see, now we have multiple masks that we can use to tweak the image. So the first mask is human and this is going to be our subject. There is a mask of the sky. 
the water in the image. We can also select the mountains as well as other masks that we can use. We can also select multiple masks. So if you want to work on the subject and the sky, we can click on both of them and make changes to the sky as well as the subject. So in this case, the image is a little bit overexposed in the sky. So we can click on the sky mask and use it to reduce the exposure. So once you have your mask selected, you can go back to adjustments and we can reduce the exposure from the sky. But in this case, I don't really like the mask of the sky in this image because it's giving us some halos on the edges. So what I'm going to do is uh, select the subject instead. Then we can switch to the brush tool and I'm going to include this part of the foreground as well. So now we have pretty much all the foreground selected. What we can do now is go to the mask options and this will give us some options to fill, clear and invert our selection. So I'm going to click on invert and now we have the selection of the sky. So now I can go back to the adjustments tab and what we can do is reduce the exposure a little bit as well as reducing the highlights. So this is the before and after, and that looks pretty good. So this is the first change that I wanted to do. Now, if you want to make another adjustment to the subject, we can close the develop tab and then reopen it again. And now we can add another layer of adjustment to the image. And this time I'm going to go to AI mask again. And because we have the masks generated, it's going to be much quicker. Now we can click on human to select our subject. And what I want to do this time is add some contrast to our subject. And I'm going to also enhance the highlights a little bit. So this is before and after. And this is how you can use AI mask in Luminar to control certain parts of the image. And this is also a quick before and after, after adding some color correction and applying a color lookup table to the image. Relight AI is one of those useful features that's gonna allow you to control the lighting of specific objects in your image without having to create masks. So let's open up Relight AI. And the first slider that we have is brightness near, which is going to allow you to brighten or darken the objects in the foreground of your image. So in this case, we have an image with a very bright background, which is making our subject a little bit underexposed. So we can use the brightness near slider to increase the exposure of our subject. There's also a brightness bar, which is as the name implies, will allow you to darken or brighten the objects in the background. We can also use the depth slider to specify a depth map of the image and control how far or near the brightness is going to be. So this is before and after, and we were able to easily brighten up the subject without having to create masks. In this next image example, we can use Relight AI to bring focus to our subject. So let's use the brightness near to brighten up our subject. And I'm going to also change the depth a little bit. So this is before and after. And as you can see, our subject is now standing up a little bit more. Next, I'm going to go to enhance AI. I'm going to increase the accent AI a little bit. And I'm going to also use the sky enhancer to bring back the details in the sky. Next, I'm going to go to landscape and increase the dehaze, which also is going to bring back some of the details in the sky. And now we can do some color grading to bring back some life to our image. So let's go to color. I'm going to start by increasing the vibrance just a little bit. Then using the HSL tab, I'm going to add some orange to the yellows a little bit. Next, I'm going to make the greens pop a little bit more, as well as the blues. 
And now the last thing that we can do is add the color lookup table by going to the mood tab. And then I'm going to choose this color lookup table in the creative section. So by increasing the amount, it's going to add some contrast and we can reduce that using the contrast slider. All right, let's add some saturation. And that looks pretty good. So here's a quick before and after of what we've been able to do in just a short amount of time. One of the most impressive features in Liminar Neo, and I find very time saving, is the objects removal tool. You can find this tool under the erase menu. And in this case, I want to remove the power lines in this image and there's a button for that. All you have to do is to click on remove power lines. It's gonna take some time to analyze the image and remove all the power lines for us. And just like that, it did an amazing job of removing all of those power lines with just a click of a button. I find this very impressive because if you're doing this in Photoshop with something like the clone stamp tool or the content to wear fill, you still have to take the time to paint all of those power lines. Of course, this will not work perfectly 100% of the time because it might struggle on very complex images. And in this case, you can see that it missed this part of the power line here, but that's okay. We can still fix that using the brush tool. All you have to do is you click on top of the area that it has missed. You can also use the shift key just like in Photoshop to paint a straight line. And then all you need to do is to click on the erase button. Likewise, if you want to restore an area back, you can just paint on top of it and then click on the restore button. So here's the before and after. So if you're doing image cleaning like this a lot of the time, this feature is going to be very useful for you. Sky AI is a feature that I use all the time in Luminar AI and Neo and it allows you to really quickly replace complex skies even with reflections. So let's go to the Sky AI tab and see how you can quickly replace the sky on this image. So first you're going to start by selecting your sky. I'm going to choose this image of the sunset. Then you're going to wait a little bit for Luminar to scan the image and replace the sky. And there you go, that was fast and easy. And the mask on this image looks really accurate. But we have a few problems that we need to fix. And the most obvious one is the grain. So the original image has a lot of grain and the new sky does not. I'll show you how to fix that in a little bit. So you have a lot of adjustments on these tabs to modify the sky. The first one is sky orientation. I'm happy with the sky position on this image. But if you want to change the horizontal or vertical position of the sky, you can do that on this tab. You can also flip the sky if you want to. There is a mask refinement tab, which will allow you to refine the details like this tree here. And most of these sliders are self-explanatory and easy to understand. So if I reduce the global slider, you'll see that now we have a less accurate mask. But if we increase it, it's going to refine the details more and more. You can use the close gap slider to close this gap between the sky and the horizon. The fix detail slider is going to allow you to fix smaller details like here on the left hand side. Next is scene relighting and this is going to allow you to match the color of the scene to the new sky. So let's increase the scenery light on this image and we'll also increase the saturation. So as you can see, the color is in this image is now matching very well with this guy. If you have a subject in your image, you can use the relight human slider to control its brightness. Next is reflection and this is the reflection of this guy on water. So let's increase the amount on this image all the way. And if you want to match a long exposure effect, you can use the water blur slider to blur the reflection of the sky. But in this case, we don't need to do that. And the last tab is sky adjustments. 
So sometimes you have an out of focus background, you can use this defocus slider to blur this guy. The next one is grain, which is going to be very handy on this image, because if we increase the grain on this guy, we can now match the amount of grain to the subject. So about 50 is going to work on this image. And the last few sliders are haze. If your image needs to have a little bit of atmospheric haze, there is the warmth slider. And lastly, a brightness slider. So sky replacement in Luminar is a great feature that's going to help you to really quickly replace skies without having to create masks. Those were the 6 features in Luminar Neo that will make your workflow much faster and easier. And right now you might be wondering if Luminar Neo is for you and whether we should compare it with Photoshop. I think that it doesn't have to compete with Photoshop. In fact, it could be a great addition to Photoshop at the times when you want to edit some images fast and save time. And at the times when you want to go deep and change every single detail in an image with layer masks and adjustment layers, then Photoshop will be more powerful and the best tool for that. So my answer is it depends on your workflow. If you are someone that want to get results fast and don't want to spend the time to understand the know-how of everything, then Luminar Neo might be the best fit for you. But in my opinion, making this decision is a no-brainer considering that this software is very cheap and compared to Photoshop, it is at the fraction of the cost. So at the time of recording this video, Skylum software is running a summer sale and you can get Luminar Neo at a discounted price using the link below. And if you are a Luminar AI owner, you can also benefit from this offer. So click the link below to learn more I hope that this video was helpful for you. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.